Jesus, that's painful for me to watch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> oh man, that is hard. Now I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to torture you like this, but you know, old friends can do that. Um, so, uh, was that scripted? <laughs> I'm just curious. Uh, <laughs> Do you remember? Do you recall? You know, I don't think that scene is... It's published. I, I can't remember. But I, um, I mean, you can look it up. One thing that you said <laughs> was... Um, okay, here's, the, here's uh, the, qu the quote. In the commentary track for, for Gummo on the, on the CD, you say that, th that on the last day of shooting, I pulled my pants down and threw my sister through a plate glass window and vomited in a yellow bucket and somebody stabbed me with a little red pocket knife. You also claim that a lot of the movie was shot on the last day of filming because you were like waiting for rain the yeah. whole time the movie that's was being true. We so shot, that's true, we shot almost half the film in the last day. Like, it was like a two month shoot, but, <laughs> uh, but the last day we shot half the movie. Wow. So, like, it was a, a spectacular day, but it was like, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> It, uh, also, because I was. Did you go overtime? Yeah, yeah, it was like a 20, you know, 24. Uh, um, but I'd been waiting for it to rain, and we shot it uh, where I grew up in Nashville, and um, it just didn't rain. Was it, was it shot in Nashville? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. In this place called The Nations, which is like this kind of. But it was supposed to be set in a. Town Ohio. In yeah, Ohio, yeah, yeah. which had just been hit by a, a tornado. Right, right, right. right. Okay. In Xenia, Ohio, yeah. Um, and. Uh, yeah, so we shot like half the movie that last day. Including that scene. And yeah, and that scene. And what happened was like, uh, obviously in order to get to a place where I could be that honest with my emotions, I, I needed to, you know, be in a certain state. <laughs> and it was, uh, it's hard to direct in that state. And uh, so we saved that for last, right? The very last, that was the last scene. And um, uh, what happened was, like, I, I was really, ex after it was done, I think uh, it was a strange feeling. It was a strange scene. And I'd gone, that, that, that kid was one of my, his name is uh, Little Brian. They call him uh, Bushwick. And uh, I like Bushwick Bill. I don't know. No, get who's that? He's like a dwarf, got his eyes shot out. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, he's a good rapper. Um, and... Uh, but I had gone to school with him for a long time, and uh, with with the, yeah, little the Brian, actor. okay, and uh, in Nashville, yeah, yeah, and um, so little Brian was like a big influence on me growing up. Uh, just he was a smooth guy. He had like a lot of like I remember in the second grade, like he had like uh, like big girls were like giving him head. In, <laughs> in like a after school like in school suspension and it, it's like freaky to see like a little like black guy like that with like a big woman sucking him off and uh, like, I, I think he's really sexy no that guy is great yeah. and uh, he had a real appeal so um, but he's, so obviously he's not really gay at all no you know <clears throat> yeah or is he bi well yeah for you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still in touch with him? Yeah, I saw him the other day. I gave him 20 bucks. It's weird because... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's strange. It's like, God's honest with you. It's so funny. Like, uh, I, was, uh, I, was, I live in Nashville now, and I was driving around looking for a, a house to, to buy. And um, I, uh, it was like, again, it was like raining, and I saw this dwarf on the a hill. <laughs> and it was him and I hadn't seen him in years so I, I drove up and he was really excited he said he gets residual checks he's a member of SAG and uh, um, but yeah I gave him 20 bucks he needed money and uh, uh, does he still look good? you know I think that was his peak to be honest uh. with you <laughs> to be honest with you but uh, <laughs> so, so anyway the um that the last scene was uh, we finished it, and I was really 
kind of, I, I was all out of it, you know? And I was really excited, it was like four in the morning and I think my sister went up to give me a hug to congratulate me on finishing the film and I, I got, something happened, I threw it through a window. And, uh, <laughs> and I think it was this grip who looked like Mr. Clean, uh, this bald guy and he, sta he took a pocket knife and uh, stabbed me in the, uh, <laughs> I think because it happened when we were fighting. <laughs> and, uh, and they threw me into the uh, car and drove me away. And then they all went to this strip club called the Mirage that was down in, in Nashville. This uh, like kind of it's like a all black strip club. It's really uh, hardcore. It's like real ghetto shit. And yeah. uh, <laughs> but I passed out, so I wasn't there. You know, so that rap party was there, and uh, <laughs> that was the way it ended. <laughs> so th that's interesting because you had you had like a. Now, you're, you, Carrie Woods, uh, Carrie Woods uh, produced that movie, right? <laughs> and your, your party, you guys partied a lot, but um, was he very hands-on? No, 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 no. Yeah. Actually, it's like really hands-off. Most people are, around me are hands-off. So, because obviously... <laughs> Because obviously I think it would be like when you have like whatever you had, like several million dollars, I assume, for that. That was just uh, 1.5. 1.5. Usually you have, even with that amount of money, you usually have producers sort of breathing down your neck going, why haven't you been shooting for the last month, you know? Uh, 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 did we were you, shooting, it was just a different kind of shooting. It was like, uh, I wanted to make a movie with images coming from all directions. I wanted to make a different kind of film. And I, I, uh, what I wanted to do is, I, I wasn't so concerned with how it was photographed or where it came from the source, I wanted to give everyone around me cameras, uh, Super 8 cameras, Polaroid cameras, video, um, 35 millimeter obviously, and um, basically like, I, I saw it almost as like a book of photos or something, like when you go to someone's house and they show you like photographs, um, like family photos, and there's a picture of like your mom on the toilet, and or, or your father, like <laughs> I don't know your birth, and or like you know visiting like a statue somewhere, or like uh, your dog that's dead. But they're kind of random. Yeah. And uh, but so I was thinking, you know, but they it, there's like a narrative that develops, you know, through this. There's like a cohesion, and um, that was like the idea of the movie. So I just wanted to set things up, and I wanted to just document it, and make sense of it later. Uh, I say it's so. Like did a, you have other people shooting with different cameras? Yeah, okay. all, all the time. And I say it's. I used to say it's like a mistake, a start form. You know, a uh, I was more. It was just as interested in the mistakes, as as I were the things that were pre-planned. It was like chemicals. I wanted to put them in like a, a like a bottle, different chemicals, and shake it up and uh, document the ex 